Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to talk about using the tracker in After Effects. This is part two of a collection of tutorials about the tracker. In part one, I talked about how you use the tracker to track the motion of an object or a person inside a video clip. In this particular case, we track the motion of my daughter going down this zip line. And we use the tracker down here in the corner to do that automatically. And when you use the tracker, it creates keyframes that are stored in the clip that you analyzed. So here's that clip. It's called zip line. If I open it up, there'll be a sublayer here called motion trackers. And under motion trackers will be each tracker. In this case, it's tracker one. And each tracker can have multiple track points. In this case, we just had one track point. And each track point can have keyframes for several elements within the track point. The most important one is the feature center. That's the thing that you followed. That's the little box that was around my daughter's face or around her head that followed her down the zip line. The attach point is the uh, point to which an effect or another layer can be attached. And then the confidence says how confident um, After Effects was in terms of how well it thought, if you want to call it that. It was uh, actually tracking the motion. So these guys are there for your use. They're always there unless you delete the uh, tracker, which is really no reason to do that at this particular point. And uh, they're just doing nothing, just waiting there for you to use them. So how do you use them? You can apply these keyframes uh, to other layers to have those layers go in motion to follow the motion. And you can apply them to effects that have control points within this particular uh, layer. How you apply them typically is using the edit target uh, option over here in the tracker. Right now the edit target option is turned off because we don't have a motion source selected. But you would typically use the edit target button over here to apply those keyframes. But you can also just copy and paste these keyframes to let's say the position or the anchor point for other layers. But right now for this particular tutorial we'll focus on using the automatic way of applying those keyframes over here inside the tracker. So let me close this guy up for now. First thing I want to do is apply those keyframes to an effect that has a control point. The lens flare effect is one of those effects. I'll just type lens up here in the effects and presets area, LENS, and there's lens flare, and I'll apply that to this clip. And there's the lens flare. You notice that when you apply it, it has this little target, this little control point there, and the control point is the lens flare center. We want to have the lens flare center follow the motion of my daughter and have that connected to the attach point, which is just above her head. And it's very easy to do that. Remember, this effect is now in this clip. And if you want to see that, just open up the clip. When you add an effect that adds an effects sublayer right there called effects, and then shows every effect that's been added, in this case, just lens flare. And there it is. And if you open it up, you'll see that it has a flare center, uh, which you can keyframe. But we're going to do that automatically with the motion tracker. So to do that, we go back to the tracker. We need to tell the tracker, you know, from which of these layers are we going to get the motion track keyframes? So that you go over here to the motion source and say, you know, where are those guys? Well, the only one that has keyframes is the one that's marked here, the one that's not in gray. So I select that. So now we've told it which one we're going to use to get those keyframes. We need to tell it which motion track we're going to use. There's only one motion tracker. There's tracker one. So that's the one we're going to select. And once you do that, other options appear. And the, mo the one you're going to use now is to edit the target. You need to tell it where you want to send these keyframes. To what do you want to attach those keyframes? So you click the edit target, and it gives you whatever options uh, you have. You can either apply it to all those layers, which I've got above here, which are currently turned off so you don't see them. But I'm not interested in layers here. I'm interested in an effect control point. And there is an effect control point available. That's why this radio button is active and it's not grayed out here. So I'll select that radio button. And the only effect control point available right now is this one effect that I added to the zip line, the lens flare. So if I knock this uh, drop down list down, you'll see that's the only option. It's a forced option. And I click OK. And you're thinking now, great. Now I should see that uh, lens flare in motion. Well, first of all, you don't see it at all here, which is what throws people off a lot. This is not the comp panel. This is the layer panel, which, is, which appears when you work in the tracker and click on the motion source. So it's switched from the comp panel to the layer panel. You might not have even seen that happen. So go back to the comp panel. And there is the lens flare. But you're going, well, wait a minute. It's supposed to be on top of her head. Why did it move? And why isn't it a following motion here when I go along? It just sits there in the middle you know, while she's going down the zip line. That's because you didn't take the last step. And a lot of people forget about this. After you click Edit Target, you need to do one more step. So let me go back to the tracker. We've already got things loaded up. We've got the zip line. We've already edited the target. So we don't need to do that again. But now we need to apply it. So just click this button, Apply, which appears after you've clicked on Edit Target and selected a target. So I click the word Apply. 
And now it says, okay, do you want the uh, x and y coordinates to be transferred over to this, or just the x or just the y coordinates? And almost always you pick x and y because you want the motion to be in a plane as opposed to a line. So we say, yeah, we can take x and y as opposed to x only or y only. So yeah, we take x and y, click it, and now, lo and behold, the flare is where it belongs, right above her head. And let's see if it actually follows the motion from where the point where she gets on the zip line and starts going down, like right there. Let's see. And there we go. How cool is that? So that's the way you can apply tracker keyframes to an effect within the clip from which you got the tracker keyframes. And uh, that has, and that effect has to have a control point. And I'll just show you again. Let me open this up now. You'll see that under effects, under lens flare center, those are all the keyframes that came from the motion tracker. You see how they're lined up there exactly where they belong. So good, that's one way to do that thing. I'm going to turn off this effect so we don't see it for a second. Let's say instead you wanted to apply uh, that set of keyframes to an effect on another layer. You can't apply it directly, but you can apply it to the layer. So I'm going to turn on this black solid I've got here. And I've already applied the lens flare to it. Now the difference between using this lens flare in motion and using the lens flare down here in the effect is that down here in the effect, the lens flare had this kind of uh, way that as the lens flare went across this sort of extra reflection then moved opposite directions. See how it goes in the opposite direction like that? Which is a really cool effect. If you apply the lens flare to something else, that little extra motion won't happen. It just sort of sits there if the lens, unless the lens flare is in motion itself there. So here I've applied lens flare to this layer and I want to show you that you can actually have this go in motion as well. So I can see what's underneath this layer because it's a black background to which I applied this lens flare. I'm going to go change the blending mode, which will so a blending mode that will allow me to see what's below it. And I'll go down to screen and that lets you see what's below it. Let me turn off the other lens flare down this so you have double lens flares. So now we've got this uh, clip above here that has lens flare applied to it, but it's just going to be static. It's not going to have that extra kind of motion applied to it. And I want to be able to have that, that layer follow uh, Janine down the zip line. So to do that again, I go back to the tracker, select the uh, zip line because that's the source of the keyframes. And by the way, make sure it says transform there. If it says raw or something else, then it won't uh, follow the motion. So I got to go back to transform, edit the target. And this time we're going to pick a layer instead of an effect control point. So I want the layer to be the black solid layer. That's the one that has the lens flare on it. So I pick that layer. And so now that I've edited the target, you need to take that one additional step, and that is to apply it. So we're going to apply it to X and Y, because that's what we want to do. We want to follow motion in a plane, not on the line. There we go. And now you can see that the uh, lens flare is above her head there as well, exactly what we want. But what it, an advantage that we have when we use a separate layer like this, we do lose that little kind of flip when the lens reflection kind of flips around. That is one little loss there when we use the layer separately. But what we gain from putting in a layer is that we can adjust the position of the lens for a little more accurately. So I can show you what I mean when I open up the uh, black solid layer and look at the transform property, or transform effect. And under transform, there's keyframes that were applied to the position. This is what just happened when we used the tracker and applied the keyframes to this layer. They apply those keyframes to the position, which makes sense. We want to change the position of the entire layer since it's black and we use the screen blending mode, we can see through it and there's no edge to it as we move the whole layer around, which is a good thing. So we're moving the whole layer here and having the whole layer uh, basically move the effect for us rather than move the effect. But what's happened here is that uh, the effect is a little bit off maybe where I want it to end up. I mean, we put it on the attach point, it ends up being a little bit above her head. But because of the uh, anchor point for the layer and, and basically some other reasons, this is just a little bit off where I want it. And I can adjust that, not by adjusting the position keyframes, which might be the logical thing, but just think of all those keyframes you'd have to change if you wanted to do that. And you can also use what's called an expression if you want to change the keyframes here in position. But let's not uh, work too hard. Let's make it simple. We can just adjust the anchor point, which is not keyframed. It's just a static number. We can adjust the anchor point to move it down, and then the uh, lens flare will follow her all the way down. So I can just adjust the anchor point by just dragging these guys around. Let's say to bring it down a bit right there behind her head. Let's just say, let's just call that the place we really wanted it. And now as I go forward, it will follow her down the track. 
So we added the keyframes here in the position, but we allowed, but because we applied it to an entire layer, we could adjust the anchor point. And anchor point is not an option in the uh, lens flare effect. The lens flare effect only has the uh, control point. So that's just one of the advantages of using a separate layer for an effect like the lens flare. Let me turn that off and show you a couple other things. I want to apply the emotion to a uh, text and to, let's say, a graphic. So I've got text here that just says fun, and I created a little shape layer that just is a little line. And I want to attach these guys to her using the keyframes from the tracker. Now, if I want to attach them to her and have them, let's say, change size, as they change size, they won't change size as a unit. They'll change size separately. And their anchor points will affect how they change size, too. So let's say I change scale. There's that one going up by itself. And if I change scale for the other one, the shape layer, it will change size in a different uh, location. It will sort of act off of its own anchor point and won't necessarily connect up with the word fun. So I want to be able to have those guys behave as a unit. And one of the things that people who work with Premiere Pro know is that if you want something to behave as a unit, you can put it in a nested sequence. You put it in one sequence and nest that sequence inside a timeline and they'll act as a unit. And the same kind of a, a thing works inside After Effects where you can nest a comp. But one other thing that After Effects has that Premiere Pro and other nonlinear editors don't have is that it has what's called a null layer. You can apply things to a null layer, which is invisible, transparent, but and causes these guys to act together. So I'm going to add a null layer by right-clicking here in, in this empty area. Anywhere in this place, I just right-click an empty area and click on New and Null Object. Now, I could have also gone to Layer New Null Object. But I, I like to work with con what are called context menus, which are these right-click menus in the uh, panels where they apply. So I just right-click, and the context menu for this panel opens up, and there's new null object, null object layer. Adds a null object at the top of all the layers. And you'll notice that when you do when you add that, it adds a little red square, and that is the representation of the null object layer. And the anchor point's in the upper left-hand corner, but the red square will not be visible when you render this out as a movie. It's just there for your convenience. And you can turn it off if you wanted just to kind of make it go away by just turning off the light bulb. It's nice to see it in this particular case. And what I want to do is I want to connect these two guys to the null object layer, and then the null object layer is what I'm going to animate with the keyframe. So the first order of business is to make sure the null object layer's anchor point lines up with this little point down here, so that as we adjust things, the anchor point, which is what we're going to use to uh, follow the motion, uh, will allow them to work together nicely and not move off the attach point. But I want to move that position the anchor point down to this little spot here so that when we attach these two guys to the null object layer, they'll all work as a unit with this area being the attach point to the uh, motion tracker keyframes. So I'll grab this guy and I'm going to pull it down to right there. So the anchor point and the uh, position are all lined up there. And now I want to be able to connect these two layers to the null object layer. And the way you connect them is by what's called parenting. Now the parent column is open here. If it weren't open, Let's say the parent column wasn't open. Go, you know, how do I find the parent column? You just right click in this column header here at the top of the layers. Right click, and it says columns, and you can select parent right there. Now I want to parent these two guys, the fun, the text layer, and the shape layer to the null object layer. And it seems a little odd to say you're parenting something to something. You're, it's actually null is the parent, and fun and shape are the children, but it's called parenting. So I'm going to drop this open up this drop-down list and say that I'm parenting these, this layer to null 1 and this layer to null 1. So now if I move the null object layer, I'll open up here just so you can see when I move it manually here, if I move the, the null object layer by moving the position, see how they all work as one unit now, which is what you wanted. So let me close this guy up. And you do need to attach them first before you um, uh, parent them. That way they're going to line up nicely like that. So now I need to go and apply the uh, tracker keyframes to the null object layer. To do that, I go back over here to the tracker panel on the lower right-hand corner. The motion source is the original motion source back down here in the zip line video. So I open that up, click, motion, click the zip line video. Now it says uh, we've got tracker 1, which is the only tracker there. It says transform because we're using the transform effect. And we're going to edit the target. And this time, the target will be a layer as opposed to an, as opposed to an effect control point. It's not going to be the black solid. It's going to be null 1. There you go. Click OK. And remember, now we need to do the next step, which is to click the Apply button. We're going to get that same X and Y message, which is almost always going to be, yes, I take X and Y. And now, boom, notice it moved it right up there to where the attach point was. 
And I'm going to now play this and see how it follows her all the way down like that. Now, if I want to sort of fine tune the position again, I have this wonderful option now because this is a layer we're talking about to go back into the null layer, go to the anchor point, and sort of move these guys around just a little bit. If I want to fine tune that position just a little bit more like that. And also, if I want to keyframe, let's say, the size of this thing, where it's a, there it starts kind of large. It's actually off screen there. It's okay. If I want to keyframe the size, I can change the scale here and have that keyframe like that. I'll turn on scale keyframes and then I move along here a little layer. But up here I'm going to make it large. And then later on we'll make it small again as she goes off into the trees. So as you keyframe this stuff, you actually um, keyframe both things at once. And notice that the anchor point you know, got pulled away a little bit, so you can also keyframe the anchor point if you want to just adjust exactly how it fits above her head. But that's one of the cool advantages of working with the null object layer. You, you can change the size of multiple objects all at once because they're all parented to this layer. So that's how you use motion tracker keyframes inside After Effects to uh, control the motion of an effect that has a control point and that effect is applied to the clip from which you got those motion tracker keyframes. Or you can apply those keyframes to other layers and then fine tune how those, uh, how those tracker keyframes behave by adjusting the anchor point. All that here in After Effects.